right, let's talk about the other side of the ball. Let's talk about Dallas. This is the game script that we all wanted. This was the game we all wanted, really, from this one, where... I wish they could play every week. <laughs> <laughs> play the Falcons every single week, Falcons versus, versus Cowboys. But Dak Prescott and Matt Ryan were both top 12 in terms of pass attempts. And we saw a ton of plays in this game. Atlanta went up 29 to 10 early. Dak took the comeback trail into his own hands. If you're a, you know, you have Zeke, you're probably a little disappointed because Dak well, had three rushing touchdowns in this game. But what we've been preaching all off season long is that Lamb, Cooper, and Gallup can all be productive in this offense. I know Gallup, Gallup's kind of been the odd man out lately. He really has been relegated. Just like I, I thought where CD Lamb's gonna get a bunch of the underneath stuff, get the screens, get stuff near the line of scrimmage. Gallup's gonna be a pure deep threat. So he's gonna be a little bit more boom bust. I think we're seeing that a little bit more than we hoped. But there every week it feels like there is, whether it's a phantom PI call, but CD Lamb, Alex, you, you took shots on him in a lot of leagues. I know you did. You gotta be feeling happy about 17.5 fantasy points over a hundred yards in this game feeling good about it um but Gallup you're absolutely right he's the odd man out and I think he's kind of the boomer yeah. bust deep threat in this offense he's the guy they either want to get it in his hands at the line of scrimmage and let him make plays or they want to just take shots deep down the field he had five targets in this game but Gallup right now feels like a player where if he's not getting the long touchdown or any touchdown then you're kind of worried about him because um, even if he does make a couple big plays, it's going to take two or three big plays in a game, like a four catch hundred yard game for him to even be worth starting if he doesn't have the touchdown. So I'm a little worried about Michael Gallup. Still a flex play yeah. for now. Um, I wouldn't, you know, go selling him on the cheap. Better days yet. are ahead. Amari Cooper, solid game, six for a hundred. To me, the two big storylines in this one are CeeDee Lamb, six catches for 106 yards on nine targets actually dropped a touchdown that was a bit of an underthrow by Dak as well. So that game could have been much bigger. CeeDee Lamb's on the field a ton for this Dallas Cowboys offense. They're running three wide receiver sets seemingly every single play. <laughs> so Lamb, if you have him, I, I've started him two weeks in a row, and he's been great for me. He's he's a flex play. He's a flex play with more upside um, if he breaks you know a big play for a touchdown or scores. And the other storyline for Dallas, Steph, is Dalton Schultz. Blake Jarwin out for season. We, you know, made some jokes about Schultz in week one, had a couple drops. Comes out in this one, nine catches, 88 yards, and a touchdown on 10 targets. Led the is team Dalton in Schultz targets. someone you were willing to stash on the end of your bench? I think he is worth a deep stash, especially if you're a guy like I me. I think so as well. And you had Blake Jarwin. Like, I was plucking in Logan Thomas last week. I might look at Dalton Schultz as another, just, just based on the situation. I don't know a ton about the guy's talent. I wasn't in love with his talent based off of his, you know, first game when he came in for Jarwin but I mean he led the team with 10 targets 21 fantasy points he's at worth he's at least worth considering stash him on the end of your bench if you are in a, a tight end desperation situation